Biden and Xi Jinping, the big meeting in San Francisco. Biden telling uh, Xi that tensions must not veer into conflict. Xi telling Biden planet Earth is big enough for both countries to succeed. Well, the two leaders are meeting on the fringes of the APEX summit. It's taking place in San Francisco. Let's get some analysis of the situation. We're joined by Alessio Patalano, Associate Professor in East Asian Warfare and Strategy at King's College. Alessio, thanks for joining us. As always, a pleasure to see you. Um, these two have a lot to discuss. There are many points where they disagree. Uh, Taiwan just being one of them. Um, yes, indeed. And I think this is one of the reasons why the first thing to say about the meeting is that success is measured by the fact that they met, um, they got together and they started to put on the table all the list of issues, a very long list of issues, of which Taiwan is one. Uh, but there are others that concern um, uh, China, uh, China uh, Chinese expanding nuclear arsenal, uh, the economic competition, the fragility of supply chains, the slow uh, bouncing back of world economy and the changing dynamics inside of China. Um, these are all elements of a very complicated and complex conversation uh, that certainly uh, indicates that at the very least the fact that they are meeting is an important step. Indeed, an important step. Uh, other issues, of course, uh, Ukraine, very important to both. Uh, no one quite certain what China's position really is. Uh, factually uh, in in Ukraine. There's that situation. Biden, I imagine, looking for some kind of clarification for Xi Jinping. Yes, although we have to be absolutely careful about the fact that this is also a situation whereby um, the both the Chinese and the American leader they are they are measuring each other up in light of the new circumstances. Uh, Xi Jinping's saying the world is big enough for the both of us is a clear opening towards having a sign from the American administration that is a recognition that China stands on equal terms with the United States. Something that Xi Jinping had tried already towards the end of the Obama. Administer, second Obama administration. Uh, Biden, on the other hand, um, coming to this meeting to get clarification on issues such as um, uh, uh, Ukraine or indeed even China's position um, of the, uh, the war in the Middle East. But at the same time, he doesn't want to look as is waiting for China's support in any of this uh, because that would inevitably suggest to Xi that it is a time in which the American leadership is under question again and there is an opportunity to be seized. So here what we're looking at is a situation whereby critical issues such as Ukraine are discussed, but we need to be very cautious about expectations in terms of uh, um, advancing substantively on the agenda, because at the end of the day, this is a meeting that is a first and foremost about sizing each other up. Indeed, hear exactly what you're saying. But over the past year, uh, you know, anybody who, who's observing the situation has probably seen and heard Mao Ning, the spokesperson for the, uh, the, the Chinese government, stand up and say that China will not be pushed on any issue. That said, and business being business, perhaps Biden has a little bit more leverage than most uh, people are in the world to actually talk to Xi Jinping and maybe somehow shape what happens next. 100%. And I think one of the key points here is that one of the elements, one of the few elements of, of more substantive conversation um, is the one concerning uh, climate change and, and the future, if you want, of sustainable economic development. This is something that they can talk about. They, can, but they both recognize, they both feel strongly about, and it becomes an opportunity to start having a conversation as a way to um, create a further opportunity. The second element is to re-establish some uh, level of military communication in between the two um, military organizations from the two countries. And again, here is a situation whereby the United States, notwithstanding the commitments globally, still remain a power that is seen in China as a formidable opponent. And so in that sense, there is a sense of advantage. And the Chinese have realized that particularly in the Indo-Pacific, their more assertive posture, their more assertive um, actions have not materialized in the type of results that we're hoping for, which is de facto their capacity to become the hegemonic leader, um, if you want, in the region. That has not happened. So the United States still has some measure of advantage in pushing the Chinese to see value into these conversations. I started with Taiwan. I'm going to finish with Taiwan. Biden said, of course, uh, very clearly that if China makes a move on Taiwan, the US will defend it. Uh, that sounds like 
a bit more than just saber rattling. It sounds like the US saying it would actually respond should China invade Taiwan. And of course, that menace is still there. The aircraft being flown over, the possibility of maneuvers, all manner of things that makes Taiwan fear what happens next. Is that situation going to be diffused at all in this meeting, do you think? I don't think it's going to be diffused at all, but it is very important that uh, uh, Xi Jinping meets with Biden to get a sense of what Biden means uh, when he points out very clearly that any move uh, over Taiwan would see an American response. Here we're not talking about strategic clarity versus strategic ambiguity. We're talking about uh, shifting the ambiguity, not over the fact that the United States would do something, but what exactly would do. That complicates the thinking if for Xi Jinping, and it creates um, a situation by which it raises the risks of higher costs for Xi Jinping with the hope that that will prompt him to come back to a more um, sort of de-escalatory conversation, hard as it's going to be. So in this respect, I think we will see over the next few months the results of this meeting, whether it has managed to shift if you want, uh, the balance of the conversation away from one in which we're gauging assertiveness to one whereby dialogue and conversations are again part of the core elements of moving forward. That say, with elections in Taiwan coming up in January, we might see some, still some more action. And perhaps that is the reason behind which Biden is very clear about the US position when it comes to cross strait relations. Alessio Patalano, it's always uh, a pleasure to speak to you. Your clarity on these subjects is much appreciated. Uh, Associate Professor in East Asian Warfare and Strategy at King's College. Alessio, thanks for joining us here on France Thank 24. You.